Hello! In this video we're going to show how to install a tool chain on a modern computer like a Windows, Linux, or Mac uh, to develop assembly language programs for a T vintage TRS-80 computer. Now this is the the Z80 TRS-80 computers um, like the Model 1 through 4 or the business systems like the Model 2, 12, and 16. Um, we're going to use George Phillips ZMac and uh, TRS-80 GP. Um, that's the assembler is ZMac and TRS-80 GP is the emulator. It's extremely helpful as we develop to be able to have an emulator of the TRS-80 so our um, sort of edit, assemble, run cycle is very tight on the host computer. We'll also talk about in future videos how to um, upload the software to a real TRS-80 computer and run it and test it, which is a reasonable thing to do. Um, but this video is going to really hone in on just getting the tool chain installed. We're not going to build any assembly language or use the tools at all. We're going to just get them going. I'll step you through first Windows, um, then Linux, uh, and then the Macintosh. Hopefully it'll help um, rather than a simple list of instructions so you can see the, the issues that might come up and be able to um, overcome them so that you can get the tools installed on your system and, and working and ready for kind of more advanced use like actually developing assembly language. The software we're going to download is from George Phillips website at 48k.ca. These are the stable links and I just want to remind folks that George makes updates um, so check back for new releases so maybe pause this and uh, check these links out and maybe bookmark them. Before we dig into Windows I suggest you watch all the OS instructions. Um, the other OS's might help you understand any problems you run into on yours and we might build a bit on some of the earlier instructions sort of assuming you've seen this um, like when we get to Mac or, or Linux. First Windows will create a directory on your Windows machine like C colon backslash TRS-80 but it could be anywhere to store your executables. We next need to add that location into your path and we'll do that by editing the system environment variables. We'll download TRS-80GP, the emulator, and ZMac, our assembler, from George's website at 48k.ca. We'll unzip both files, but let's start with the emulator, into a temp directory. Within that directory, there'll be a subdirectory called Windows, and we'll copy TRS-80GP.exe into our new directory. Then we'll unzip ZMac, the assembler, into a temp directory and copy zmac.exe into our new directory. At this point we're ready to test so you can open a command prompt to run the programs. And I recommend running zmac space dash dash version which will print out the version. You can just run zmac. Um, it will say you don't have any input file but print the version. And when you run trs80gp you should see the emulator pop up on the screen. If this all works you can delete the temp directories. You won't need those anymore. Now this is just an overview. We're going to step through this on a Windows machine to see how this actually goes. All right, here's my Windows desktop. It's Windows 10. It's sort of up to date um, with its Egyptian background there. Now the first step is on C. I want to create that TRS-80 directory to stick these in. So I'll go to the C drive and create a new folder and type TRS-80. Great. Okay, so we have a new directory. I'm going to click in and then save the path as text. And I'm going to go edit the system environment variables like clicking on Windows and typing edit system. And you should see it pop up on a menu. So you can click on it and you go right to system properties and the environment variables way down the bottom. So click on that. And you can edit the path variable in either one, but I'll go ahead and do it just in my user. Um, either, either system or user, whatever you want to do. And it has nice rows. It didn't used to have this, but I say new. And then because I copied it, I can just paste C colon backslash TRS-80 into the path. And you can see it up there as part of the path, which is nice. And I'm going to say OK and then say OK to make sure that's there. So I now have that directory in my path. Next, we need to download the software. So we go to George's site at 48 k.ca 
uh, I'm going to the home page here. To get what we need, we need to scroll down to software on the lower uh, left, sorry, and find uh, TRS-80GP first. Then up in the upper right, he has the download link. That'll always be up to date. You can sort of check the version. We've got 2.4.4. It'll probably be newer if you're doing it. Um, and then we go to ZMAC and do the exact same thing. So now we have a TRS-80 GP zip file and a ZMAC zip file, which is exactly what we want. Now I'm in Chrome, so I can use either of the um, links to get into my downloads directory. And you can see I've got the two zip files and a bunch of other junk. So I'm using a uh, 7-zip to extract into directories. You could also just double click in like you, you would with Windows. That'll work fine, whatever you choose to do or whatever zip program you have. So I'm going into TRS-80 GP, the emulator, and I double click into the Windows directory, and there's the executable I want. So I'm going to copy that, and then we're going to go back to the window that has us in C colon TRS-80 and paste into that. So we have that file in there. It'll add it a new copy to our path. So back in downloads, I'm going to do the exact same thing. Um, ZMac only has a Windows executable, so it's at the root of the zip. We'll paste it into our C colon TRS-80 directory. Now we're ready to test, so we'll open a command prompt. I have a desktop shortcut, but um, you can um, do it from the Windows menu. So I'll do ZMac dash dash version. That works fine. And when I run TRS-80 GP, I get the emulator. Um, so I can see it's 244, so it's the right one. And I'm ready to go. So all the tools are set up under Windows. I have an assembler and a... Uh, nice emulator in TRS-80 GP. I don't actually use command prompt that much, so I want to talk about what I do use. Um, I use msys2, but you could also use sigwin to sort of create a Unix environment on your PC. Um, I like msys2. One tricky bit with it is um, you have to tell it to use the full Windows path. So if I look at my shortcut, you can see it says dash use full path. Um, that's fairly new, I think. It didn't used to do this, but yeah, that's what you add to the dash use full path. Um, now you have a more, much more Unix-like setup um, with this, but it will still run the programs we installed, TRS-80 ZMAX. So I can do ZMAX dash version, and it's going to run the Windows version we set up on Windows, and TRS-80 GP. And I guess I'm going to do uh, M4, Model 4. So there we go, Model 4 with uh, Tristos 6. Um, that's great. It, it all works. Um, if you're more comfortable with, with Unix and you're trying to do this on a Windows um, machine, I highly recommend either msys2 or, or um, Sigwin. And it, it should work just fine like this. Um, and I'm going into my um, Git repository of assembly language here, but we don't we don't need to worry about that so much. Um, one of the advantages I like about it is you can see I'm using VI to edit the um, the the uh, assembly language that I was working on way back for Tandy Assembly uh, 2019, um, and it's got all the Unix-like tools. Finally, whether you use msys or sigwin or just command prompt, you really want a couple of these up. You're going to want to be assembling in one, um, kind of running TRS-80 GP in another, maybe editing in another if you're doing a text editor. Um, realize you can have more than one of these text windows. I did not have this in the overview, but it's a good idea to install PlayCast. Um, search for TRS-80 PlayCast in Google, and it'll take you to... Uh, Knut.1, um, and there's a file, oh, there we go, now we're clicking into it, uh, Play Cast. Uh, it's a cassette player. This will be nice and helpful for us to actually uh, run the, the assembly language we create on, on real TRS-80s using the uh, cassette line to uh, play the the files we create. So inside the zip, you're going to see three files, Play Cast, EXE, uh, a, a font, and um, a, uh, a PDF which has the instructions. So we're going to get all of those. Now I'm going to show you, yeah, you do do copy to get all three files. Now you, you don't need to put this in the C colon TRS-80. You could, you could create playcast and stick all these files in there. But I happen to have them on my D drive in a th directory called media. So I'll show that media bin. And then there's um, playcast version two. Um, and what we do here is I'm kind of showing how I did this is you kind of click on the play.exe and right click and then go down to send to 
and you're going to create a shortcut on the desktop desktop create shortcut so you click on that and that will create a entity of that on the desktop that you can just run it, you don't have to worry about the path or anything for this and it creates a window um, and now you can open it up and set your directories to anywhere you want I'm gonna go into bin again I have a couple cast files here's the model one version of the dancing ball program that George Phillips wrote for Tandy assembly 2019 um, we'll show how to use this in much more depth when we when we get into future videos but this is a super useful tool to have installed on your Windows machine if you're gonna run on real TRS 80s all right that's it for Windows now we'll look at uh, Linux and I'm gonna do in bud um, we'll actually show this on an Intel based Ubuntu then I'll show a uh, Raspberry Pi um, which is arm based Ubuntu um, we'll go through the overview first and then step through the machines as we did before. So the first step um, is a little bit of a trick on Linux. Um, in your user account, you can create a bin directory, in particular like tilde bin, and log back out and log back in. And the system will add this directory to your path. So this will avoid the weird path editing, which we, we could do, and you can find many videos that show you how to update your um, Ubuntu path. but um, this saves us having to do this. Again, we're going to download TRS-80GP and ZMAC. The first step is we'll unzip TRS-80GP into a temp directory. Um, and then we have to pick the right TRS-80GP. Uh, George ships several of them. It's amazing how um, cross-platform TRS-80GP is. It's very impressive. Um, you have to pick the right one. So if you're on Linux, on Intel, it's called Linux. So that'll be 32-bit, but most likely it's going to be 64 if your machine's reasonably up-to-date. So Linux 64 if you're on an Intel processor or AMD or something that's Intel-like. Um, the what's not Intel like is the Raspberry Pi that uses an arm and you'll pick either 32-bit or 64-bit whether you're on a Raspberry Pi. I use 64-bit Raspberry Pi 4 a lot and I'll show you my setup and you can see how we do that. Um, then we unzip ZMac. Now ZMac only has an executable for Windows so we need to build ZMac from source code on the system. Um, these are the first there's gonna be two steps to that one is to actually uh, um, install the tools we need if you don't have them so you can run this sudo apt install and then there's the list of tools make bison GCC and G++ those are the tools you need to do the build now with un under the ZMAX zip there'll be a source directory so within that you run make and that will build the ZMAC executable. So a new file will appear just ZMAC. You copy that file into your tilde bin and that makes a copy of ZMAC that can actually be running. So we now have both the emulator and the assembler in our bin directory under Ubuntu. We can test it exactly the same way um, in a terminal window under Ubuntu and see if a ZMAC dash dash version should print the version. You can also just run ZMAC and it'll just say you don't have any input files and TRS-80GP should pop up on your screen. So now we'll actually do this on an Ubuntu computer. Our first step is to create the bin directory and I'll show you how it gets added to the path. Dot profile gets run when you log in. And if you look in the middle of the screen, it checks if you have a bin directory in your home directory and adds it to your path if you have one. That's how it does. So we'll create a bin and then we'll log out and log back in. All right, so I'll exit my terminal window, then go log out. And we need to do this because dot profile only gets run on login. So I'll log back in. And now bin should be in our path. Um, it's a little annoying to run the terminal window from the search thing every single time. So when we get this to come up, you can sort of right click on it and add it to favorite so it'll stay over on that bar on the left hand side and it's easier to start a new one. And we can double check that we have it there. And in fact, if you look at the first entry, it's my user account, Haller and T and Bin, and it's in the path. So this is great. We can we can now put the assembler and our um, TRS 80 GP emulator right into that path. All right, now we need to go to George's website again and download um, the assembler and the emulator. So I've started up Firefox here.
and we'll type 48k.ca. That'll bring us back to the home page. And we go to software. And we'll start by downloading TRS80GP. It's up in the upper right. And I'm going to save the file. I'm not going to open it in the archive manager. If, if you like the archive manager, you can certainly go ahead and do that. So we'll CD into downloads, which it should have gone. And in fact, there it is. So we can use the unzip. Dash Q is just quiet, so it doesn't list all the files. Um, it's a little bit easier to spot if something goes wrong. The warnings don't scroll on by. So I see a whole bunch of directories. And if we look at the architecture, we're dealing with a 64-bit one. So we CD into Linux. Um, George is probably going to change that to Linux-64 because there is the Linux-32. But if you see Linux-32 in Linux, that 64-bit is in Linux directory. All right. So we copied that into our bin. Now we'll go to, um, it's going to take a little bit more with ZMac. So we've copied the TRS80GP out of Linux 64 into our bin. Now we're going to unzip ZMac. Um, and we have the source directory. So we have to, um, oh, I'm looking at the ZMac.exe. Uh, this is just to sort of show that this is a Windows executable. So what comes with it won't work under Linux at all. So we CD into source. Um, and this is the complete source code for ZMac here with a with a make file, which is what we want to do under that. If we just try to run make on this system, which is a new Ubuntu, um, it, it nicely tells us that there's some packages missing. Now, I listed in the overview what we need, which is the make program GCC, Bison, and G++. So we're going to go sudo apt install. And this will do um, go ahead and ask us our password, but it will go ahead and do an install of these utilities, which are basically a C++, C++ compiler, a uh, parser generator and a, a, a C compiler and the make utility to build them. So this will take a second. But when it finishes up, we're ready to uh, run the make command again and build ZMac, our assembler. It'll go through the steps and we have a ZMac file. And here I'm just going to run a test in this directory by running it, you know, dot slash ZMac. Looks like it's working. And if we examine the file with the file Unix file command, we can see that we've got a 64-bit uh, Linux executable. So we'll go ahead and move that into the uh, bin directory. And I exited, and I'm going to open a new terminal. I think I said in the overview CD, but I just did sort of move back to the root directory. So now that it's in our path and both files are in there, we should be able to run them in any directory at the command line. So ZMac version worked, and in fact, if we run TRS-80GP, it works just fine as well. Let's run a dir command. We can see some things. Super. So we now have a Linux setup. Now, in fact, we can actually install Playcasts um, on Linux, um, especially under the Intel Linux. Um, I'm doing this on my Linux laptop because uh, I've sort of already got that set up. But you can just go to the website like we did, search for TRS-80 Playcast um, and download the 2.0 version in a zip. So if you recall, there's three files in there. So how would you run this under Linux? Well, there's a system called Wine. And I've created a tilde wine directory, and inside there are the three files plus an mfc42.dll that you have to track down to make this work under wine. Um, so to run it, you would actually type wine.wine slash playcast. So you'd point to the executable running wine. And in fact, we see the GUI come up, and we're not going to spend a lot of time on this. Now, under uh, that's kind of annoying to have to remember to type that so you can actually create an alias and on my laptop I do have such an alias alias playcast actually runs the wine command so it makes it easy for me to just type playcast and, and as I mentioned before whether you're using it under Linux or under Windows which is what it was written for it's very useful for testing um, your assembly language programs and uploading them to a real TRS-80 but under Linux, you don't have to use this. 
um, you can use the play command line command to play wave files out um, to the TRS-80. That'll work just as well as play cast. I, I tend to just prefer this program over just playing the wave file. Sorry for the kind of bad picture on this, but this is my um, Raspberry Pi 4 with 8 gig. Um, I use this a lot for development, but um, it's not so great at screen capture. So I'm sort of installing, it's pretty much the exact same thing we've already done. But I did want to show this because um, these are really inexpensive computers and it's running with a dual monitor setup. You can't really see the other monitor off to the side, but it, it works great. Um, runs Ubuntu Linux, um, which I highly recommend. I, I don't like the the Raspberry Pi Linux. I think Ubuntu's caught up enough on Raspberry Pi that it's very usable and probably a bit more helpful. So uh, I've built ZMac as we did in the other thing and I'm moving it into bin. Um, then we'll shift over to TRS-80GP. Now here we've got to be careful. Remember all those versions. So it's RPI64 is the one I want. Um, and I can see TRS-80GP and I'll go ahead and move that to bin. So then we'll have both both files. Okay, so we'll go over and give it a test in this window. Um, so we're on ZMac version, it works. And we'll go ahead and try the emulator. Again, this is all ARM on a Raspberry Pi 4. Um, quite a bit different computer. This is really impressive if you understand the technology. Great job um, porting this. This is fairly new feature that George has added support for the Raspberry Pi 4. Super good. If you're interested in the ARM and the Raspberry Pi, this is a Raspberry Pi 400. It's a little all-in-one computer. You just hook up to a monitor and a power device and attach a mouse, um, put a little SD card in. Works great. Um, and the Z, as I showed just in the last segment, ZMac and uh, TRS-80GP work, work fine on, on this little computer. All right, the Raspberry Pi 400 or a lot of Raspberry Pis come with uh, Raspberry Pi OS installed by default. Now, I, I like the Ubuntu, but um, this is what you might have and you might not be comfortable installing that. So the instructions are largely the same. You can create the bin directory, log out, log back in, and it'll add to your path. We'll get the, the uh, assembler and uh, emulator like we did for Linux. Um, one difference is we're only going to look at the RPI subdirectories. And if you don't know, because um, you may not know which is which, on my um, Raspberry Pi 400, it had a 32-bit OS. We'll show that in a minute. Um, I tried the 64-bit first and then tried the 32-bit, and 32-bit worked, so I installed that. Um, one thing I will tell you is when you go to build Z, uh build ZMac in the source directory. Um, you might just have to type that sudo apt install command. It doesn't prompt you like Ubuntu saying, oh, I'm missing um, YACC, so please install this package. Um, but this will do it, and then you can do make. Um, I found that it looked like make, GCC, and G++ were installed, but the Bison package wasn't on, on my particular. Yours may vary. Uh, copy the ZMac you build, and then you can test it out just like we have under the other OSs. Um, so if you're more comfortable with this on a Raspberry Pi, it works perfectly great for um, doing TRS-80 assembly language development. All right, here we are on my Raspberry Pi 400 running Raspberry Pi OS. This is what came with it. Um, let's go ahead and download the software first. We'll go to uh, George's site, 48k.ca. Um, we've done this a few times. Um, apologize, this is again the camera pointed out a screen, so the, the video might not be as good <laughs> as some of the others. So we'll download TRS 80 GP, we'll download ZMac, and we've got Chromium here so we can show in folder and go in. And uh, there's a nice extract here, so I'm just going to do that on both files. Um, we'll end up with all of it kind of bundled together, but by this point we know what's what. Um, the source is going to be for ZMac and the other directories with architectures, which we really care about, RPI 64 and 32. So we're going to get the emulator going first. Um, like I said, it's easiest to maybe just try it. Here I tried the 64-bit ARM and it didn't work, so I'm going to go into RPI32 and try running the emulator with on that. 
and it pops up. So this is a 32-bit install of Raspberry Pi OS. That's a good trick to get the right emulator. We're gonna build ZMac from source code. Um, here I'm just showing that indeed Raspberry Pi OS has the bin trick. It'll add it if it's there. So I'm making dir bin and I'll go back and since we just figured out we needed the 32-bit Raspberry Pi, let's copy the emulator out of that directory into bin. And it's there. We'll worry about ZMac later. But at this point, I'm going to log back out and log back in. That'll get that path going for, for us. And we'll go ahead and check that TRS80GP comes up. It does. It's added to the path. We got the right 32-bit version. We're all set. Um, now we need to turn our attention to the assembler. Um, and we go into source. Now one difference here is um, this doesn't prompt as well. It's kind of saying yaks not found. But um, if you do the install, I said to just do all of them. Um, Bison, GCC, Make, and G++. It, it'll um, just tell you that some of them are already installed as you as you can see on mine here it'll it'll say that some of these are already there like make was certainly there and it'll add the rest so we just wait for this to finish up and run make again and we should get a working version of ZMac on 32-bit Raspberry Pi that looks great so we copy it into our bin and CDs and we can we can do our tests now. Zmax working and we'll run TRS80 GP just one more. We know it is, but I'll bring a model for with LDOS just to see it and don't forget you could resize and make the window bigger for TRS80 GP or, or even full screen. Alright, that's it for Raspberry Pi OS. Now let's look at the Macintosh. The first thing we'll do is create a directory. Here it doesn't matter so much where we do it, but tilde bin, it's Unix-like, so we can go with the same we did in Linux. Um, we need to add the location by editing the path, um, etc paths. This will add it everywhere, or you can use sudo nano etc paths. And we're going to add our user's username, like mine would be Halloran T bin. We have to add a weird one in here because I want to be able to run TRS-80 GP from the command line, but it's packaged up inside an app. So you add this big long path that will allow us to just type TRS-80 GP like we've been doing in the other systems. So we download um, the emulator and the assembler from George's site, unzip. Um, we drag the Mac TRS-80 GP into tilde bin and that will create a dot app directory. Now to run this app, we can just double click on it, but it's, it has to be approved in the system settings, security and privacy to run because it's not a signed application. For the ZMac, it's very similar to, um, to Linux. We'll go ahead and unzip it, go into the source directory and type make. Now the Macintosh at this point will prompt you to install Xcode or at least the latest version of the Mac does. This will take a very long time, but once it's completed, you can run make just like we did under Linux and then copy that into bin. Then of course we just test that our install worked properly like we have on the other operating systems. I'll note I did this under Big Sur and it was done in uh, September of 2021. The first thing we need to do on the Mac is get a terminal window open. So go into the finder and go to applications. Uh, then you're going to scroll down to the utilities folder and inside that is the actual terminal. Now I've changed some settings to make the font bigger but you can do all of this in preferences. If you're like me, you only want to do this once, so right click and go to options and select keep in dock. That will make it stay and you can just click to open terminals, which was what we want. Uh, now we create the bin directory in our home account, and this is Ellen Halloran because this is my wife's Macintosh. So um, we create the bin. Now I'm going to go into it and uh, show the present working directory so I can copy this and just paste the path in so I don't make any typos. 
Um, now I'm going to do sudo vi etc pads. You could do nano if you're more familiar with that. I'm familiar with Unix, so I'll use vi. I have to type my password because it's a protected file. Hopefully I did that right. Now um, at the end of the path, I'll just stick my directory in. Um, and I'm only going to do bin at the beginning here. So I'll cat the file and double check I put it in right. Looks good. Um, then we'll exit and create a new terminal. And let's look at dollar path just to confirm we've got the path changed. And in fact, there it is at the, at the end of the path listing. All right, so we'll open our browser. Um, you can see I don't know the Mac as well, so I'm looking all this stuff up. Um, but let's go back to George's website, and we'll uh, go ahead and download the software on the Mac. It's the same files we've been doing. Um, you go to software. TRS 80 GP, and then in the upper right, we do the download. That'll give us a zip file and download directory. I'm using Chrome here. Um, if you're using Safari, it might be slightly different on the download. So after we've downloaded ZMac and TRS 80 GP, we can sort of click on them and the Mac will unzip them and we can see them in downloads. For TRS 80 GP, we want to drill in and go into the Mac directory. That will have the app. Um, and we'll copy that. And we want to paste it into the bin directory. All right, at this point, things went a little um, a little crazy. Uh, I want to talk about what I, uh, rather than showing the video, because it was kind of all over the place. Um, the problem I had is it was twofold. One, you need to add your home directory into the finder, which it's not there. Um, and in addition, so it makes it difficult to copy the Mac TRS-80 GP into bin because there isn't a bin to drag it to. If you add it in the finder, you can look at how to, uh, there's lots of uh, web pages and things, add your home directory into the finder, copy and paste it into bin. The other problem we're going to work through here is when you double click on that app, it should run TRS-80 GP, but it won't because it's not particularly signed by the Apple App Store. So in the next part, we're going to go through how you you can override that. It's not entirely intuitive how to do this on a Macintosh. Um, the other bit I noticed about this is the Apple has very um, strict permissions in some odd way within the user account. So you might get prompts if you're trying to copy things at the terminal that can uh, the terminal access your documents, can the terminal access your downloads. Um, and those I, I just said yes, I'm not familiar with that. Um, it's been a few years since I've developed on Macs and it, it seems like they've kind of locked it down even within a user account, which seems odd. Um, but uh, just wanted to interject and explain some of this. Um, you might have to look online a bit or, or get help from Mac experts to get this all right, but um, I did get it, get it working. So I've copied it into bin, I added the account, but when I run TRS-80 GP, it says it can't be opened because Apple cannot check it. So let's talk about how to fix that. So you need to go to System Preferences, then Security and Privacy. Mine's on App Store and Identified Developers, and I had to click Open Anyway for TRS-80 GP, which that's what got it running. I'm not sure how sensitive this is to where the app is, but I got this TRS-80 GP into that tilde bin before I did this, so it all seemed to work fine. Now, double-clicking on the app is great, but it would be nice to be able to run it from the command line. So this is how it's done. You have to go inside the app under Contents and Mac OS and run the program. Then you can put command line flags and things like that. So to get this so we don't have to type the giant path, we're going to actually add it to the paths. We have to type our password again. And you can see I've already done that, but that would be the path for the Ellen Howard and your account name is different. And that would allow us to run it from the command line. So let's take a look. And we can put command line flags just like we do on Linux or Windows, and it'll come right up. Um, this is super helpful because we'll use command prompts a lot in assembly language development, and this is easier than double clicking on the, the app as, as we'll see, because we're often gonna wanna pass whatever assembly language uh, program we just assembled to the um, to the emulator and this will make it much easier on the Mac. All right, let's turn our attention to the assembler. Um, so we'll unzip ZMac into a directory, um, sort of like we've done. Super, and we go into the source directory. 
we don't really need the Windows version, so I deleted that. Go into source. Now here we just type make, and what you'll see is we're gonna get a prompt to install Xcode, and we wanna do this. This will do a couple things. It'll install the complete Xcode development system for the Mac, but it'll also set up all the pads um, that we need. So doing this from the make at the command line sort of helps because it, it does know to put the paths in, at least in Big Sur. Now this is gonna take a super long time, so we'll just skip ahead to where it's done. All right, so that's finished. Um, I'll CD back into source and then I'll just type make and ZMAX should build just fine. Sorry for the quality here. This is like my phone filming the Mac, but we can test it here. Um, dot ZMAC dash dash version and it's looking great. So let's copy that into our bin directory to add it. That'll make it be in our path so we can run it from any directory in the terminal. All right, so that'll just about do it. Um, in my user account, I'll just double check that ZMAC version works. Looks great. If I just type ZMAC, it'll work too, but it'll just complain that you don't have any input files, no source file. So we'll try TRS-80GP with LDOS. That's LD, not 1D. Um, and it looks fine. So Macintosh is all set. All right, that's it. Um, we've got uh, Windows, Linux, and Mac set up uh, to do the uh, TRS-80 assembler and the uh, emulator. And soon we'll do some videos on how to actually use them. But this was all about setting things up. Hopefully you were successful. If not, reach out on Discord or Facebook and ask questions. And either I or other members of the community will help get you going. Um, Lots of folks uh, will be happy to um, answer any questions and see if they can assist you.